The relationship between Alicent Hightower and Kristen Cole is one of the most interesting and often misunderstood facets of the world of House of the Dragon. While many viewers seem to presume that these two people are united because of some hatred or envy of Rhaenyra Targaryen, the reality of their dynamic is far more intriguing and complex. And it honestly has almost nothing to do with Rhaenyra as an individual beyond the fact that her decisions were the genesis of Alicent and Sir Kristen's connection. Of course, it would be disingenuous to say that Rhaenyra didn't play a role in whatever Alicent Hightower and Kristen Cole became, but the interpretation of the role that she plays seems to be pretty off-base. Firstly, regardless of the initial circumstances, it's obvious that Sir Kristen's position in relation to the royal family has grown into something far beyond his connection to Rhaenyra. Kristen seems to be more of a father to Alicent's children than Viserys was. And in many ways, he seems to fulfill the role of Alicent's partner, despite the fact that they do not and cannot have a romantic relationship with one another. So, to reduce Kristen and Alicent's bond to a mean girls duo who hate on the black side of the Targaryen family for no good reason, completely undercuts their value as individual characters. Sir Kristen and Alicent weren't created to serve as cogs in the story of the blacks, and their motivations, feelings, and intentions go far beyond their potential political enemies. The incredibly strong connection that Alicent and Kristen seem to share with each other in a way that they don't connect to anyone else doesn't come as a huge surprise, though. Firstly and foremostly, one of the great ironies of trying to revolve their relationship around Rhaenyra seems to ignore the fact that if they only cared about each other because of their shared hatred of Rhaenyra, then Alicent would have thrown Sir Kristen under the bus before their friendship ever even developed. This is an interesting element of their dynamic that Alicent gets almost no credit for from the audience as well. In a sense, that's not surprising since she is doing something benevolent that she quite literally can never take credit for. But what most people don't seem to realize or acknowledge is that Alicent has kept Kristen and Rhaenyra's secret for over a decade, and she could have very easily used that information to her own advantage. At the time when Alicent discovers Sir Kristen's relationship with Rhaenyra, she obviously still cares a great deal for her best friend, and she hasn't come around to the idea that Rhaenyra might not be someone she should put all of her trust and faith into. But even as their relationship devolves horribly over the years, Alicent continually holds knowledge of extremely damaging information about Rhaenyra that she literally never tells anyone. And as time goes on and Alicent's friendship with Sir Kristen goes deeper, her reluctance to throw him under the bus in order to gain a political or social advantage over Rhaenyra makes more sense. However, when Kristen initially reveals his relationship with Rhaenyra to Alicent, she barely knows him. She has very recently been warned that Rhaenyra's claim poses a mortal threat to her and her children, and she has handed information that could massively weaken Rhaenyra. And in order to use that information to her benefit, all she would have to do is let this man that she barely knows die a horrible death. But she doesn't do that, and she never does that. And on that basis alone, it's not hard to understand why Sir Kristen worships the ground that she walks on. She is in a position of considerable power over him, and could very easily abuse that power for her own benefit which is what nearly every person in her position would do, but she doesn't do it. She quite literally chooses to save his life every single day out of sincere altruism, because she's protecting him by keeping a secret that could help her massively, and no one can ever even know that she's doing it. It's an enormous good deed that only Sir Kristen can give her the credit for, so it's not at all surprising that despite any of her flaws, Kristen himself sees her as the living embodiment of virtue. Sir Kristen clearly isn't very good at coping with his big bad emotions, but through this lens, his absurd overreactions like killing Lord Beesbury make a weird sort of sense, at least when looking at Kristen as a traumatized person who probably only trusts Alicent. During the Green Council, Lord Beesbury is essentially accusing Alicent of kinslaying and kingslaying so that she could deceptively steal the throne from Rhaenyra. Firstly, it comes as no surprise that the person who has on some level played her surrogate husband and father to her children would be frustrated and outraged that, after watching the only people he seems to care about be mistreated and forgotten by Viserys for years, Alicent would immediately be accused of committing regicide for her own benefit. More than almost anyone, Sir Kristen knows that Alicent has been thanklessly playing nursemaid to a man who can't be bothered to remember her name since she was a teenager so it's understandable that he'd be infuriated that after years of watching this dynamic play out, Alicent is suddenly being accused of killing the man that she's been constantly serving for nothing in return. Even more than that, 
These are accusations that could literally get Alicent killed under certain circumstances. So it's not that shocking that Sir Kristen would react very violently towards someone who was basically threatening Alicent's life and who was accusing her of the most horrific crimes imaginable that he obviously knows she didn't do. But his devotion to her is completely understandable given his experiences, ideals, and the role that Alicent has played in his life. Kristen Cole has obviously been almost toxically indoctrinated into the ideas of classic chivalry. And he managed to work his way from a fairly low status to about as high as he could possibly go in a society that does not make it easy for anyone to climb the rungs of social class, only to be taken advantage of and put in mortal danger as a result of Rhaenyra's whims, and only to discover that nearly everything he had been taught about the society he lives in and why it operates the way it does is a lie. The dubious consent between Rhaenyra and Sir Criston has clearly been a significant talking point within House of the Dragon. And I personally think that there is undeniably an exploitative element to their sexual relationship. The idea of consent within the world of Westeros is a strange and complex one. Because in a society that is as stratified as Westeros is, the question of how much anyone can ever truly consent when one person in a sexual relationship has almost absolute power over the other is a pretty relevant one. And given that Sir Kristen and Rhaenyra's social statuses are in such extreme contrast, I think it's very hard to argue that she was not taking advantage of him in any way. Yes, she was doing something that could ruin her reputation, but he was doing something that could get him violently tortured and killed. Sir Criston may be a member of the Kingsguard, but he only has that honor because Rhaenyra herself chose to bestow it on him. So whether or not he could say no to her or felt that he could say no to her is not as straightforward as it needs to be in order to call their relationship 100% consensual. Extreme trauma is so endemic to the world of Westeros that it's often easy to overlook how many characters are traumatized by their own experiences. But the negative reaction towards Kristen Cole seems to be driven largely by this misunderstanding. Because yes, he acts out terribly and does a lot of awful, unforgivable things. But he is also a traumatized person, and his relationship with Rhaenyra and the expected consequences of that are largely the reason why. Sure, Kristen's experiences might not seem as terrible as what many of the other characters go through, but he is someone who worked very hard to achieve one of the most honored positions in Westeros, and clearly was deeply invested in his own ideals. And in his mind, he completely failed to live up to them. He had a sexual relationship with someone against his sworn vows, and Rhaenyra largely treated him like he was disposable. He was quite literally risking his life for something that Rhaenyra didn't value at all, which is why his actions in situations like Joffrey's death are horrific and unforgivable, but actually at least comprehensible within the context of everything that has happened to him at the time. When he confessed his relationship with Rhaenyra to Alicent, he literally asks her to be merciful by simply killing him rather than torturing and mutilating him. She obviously does nothing to punish him, but then almost immediately afterward, Joffrey offers up this tidbit of information as a tacit threat to keep Sir Criston in line. And Criston's reactions seem to imply that he thinks that Rhaenyra may have told Joffrey or Laenor about their relationship. So Sir Criston betrays all of his values in a sexual relationship with Rhaenyra. Rhaenyra rejects him and he realizes that she didn't really care for him or take their relationship or his broken vows all that seriously. He confesses to Alicent believing he's going to die because of it. Then he doesn't die. And then some random dude comes up and lets him know that he is privy to information that could literally get Cole killed. Clearly, beating Joffrey to death is wrong and an outrageous overreaction. But the psychological pathos behind Kristen's actions explains a lot and is almost completely overlooked. Obviously, if he's on the verge of suicide after this event, he's going through some very severe psychological upheaval, which isn't much of a surprise given that in what seems like a week, Everything that defines his worldview has been crushed and he has repeatedly bounced back and forth between expecting to be brutally killed and then somehow not actually dying. But Alicent quite literally keeps him alive once again and largely gives him a reason to continue on because she essentially offers him the opportunity to be the person that he wants to be. And as their relationship develops further, she actually does seem to see Sir Criston as the true and loyal knight that he likely wanted to be from the start. Interestingly, Alicent's feelings for Sir Criston seem to be motivated by the very same factors as well. Their characters connect so naturally because they parallel each other in so many ways. But Alicent and Cole have such a strong bond because they each offer each other some kind of reprieve from their mountain of unresolved trauma. 
Much like Sir Kristen, Alison wound up in her position in life because she was essentially sold a lie by society. And she believed it until she got to the very top of that society and realized that the people at the top didn't give a damn about the values and ideals that she cleaved to in order to rationalize all of the bad things that she went through. Like Rhaenyra with Sir Kristen, Viserys seemed to see Alicent as less of a person and more of an object. She was someone that he could get a lot of what he wanted out of and that he gave almost nothing to in return. Viserys just expected Alicent to do whatever he said and fulfill whatever he needed. And he was borderline insulted when she wanted anything in return. Even if what she was asking for was only what Westerosi society had told her she was supposed to get to begin with. The world of Ice and Fire heavily criticizes every aspect of feudal society as a whole. But Alicent and Kristen's experiences are fascinating because in so many ways, they are people who did exactly the right things. The extreme power that some people exercise over others is supposedly justified by the people in power superiority. And in theory, society is supposed to be structured so that the most worthy people are at the very top. At least, that is the lie that is sold to anyone on the lower rungs. So, Allison and Kristen buy into that system and they manage to climb higher and higher. And when they finally get to the top, they are casually and carelessly used as tools by others and they essentially get nothing in return. They are expected to serve, but are not given what the world told them that they would get as rewards for their service. And understandably, it causes a great deal of internal crisis for them both. Clearly, the world of Westeros is not kind to the inner humanity within its citizens. So not only do Allison and Kristen have to endure the trauma that comes along with their positions and the way that they are treated by Viserys and Rhaenyra, but they essentially have to just internalize it and deal with it on their own. They are put in a position where their entire worldview has been destroyed. But they have to pretend that everything is as it should be for the benefit of the people who destroyed it. Allison and Sir Kristen's relationship is understandable on this basis alone, as in many ways, they are the only people that they can ever be honest with. They can relate to the situations they've each been put in, and they don't have to keep their inner turmoil or upset a secret from each other. Whereas nearly every person that they know either wants them to keep quiet for their convenience or because they simply don't care about either of them as people outside of their positions. But clearly their bond is a lot deeper. And again, it's easy to see why. Frankly, the kind of radical and traumatic overthrow of their personal belief system and worldview is not something that anyone would have an easy time coping with. They were both exploited by people in positions of power over them that they had no recourse against and they were expected to dutifully fulfill their roles without complaint regardless of that. The fact that Allison and Kristen inhabit such specific roles in Westerosi society is an interesting connection between them as well, as Allison as the queen and Kristen as the Kingsguard are both more valued for their positions than for themselves. And unfortunately, their interactions with Viserys and Rhaenyra seem to reinforce the notion that they are not valued for who they are, but what they offer and their individual humanity is not something that anyone around them really recognizes or has interest in. But instead of actually letting go of their perception of the world and what it should be, they find that meaning within each other rather than in the world around them. Alicent's service to the crown goes unrecognized, but Kristen offers her the admiration and devotion that she desperately wants from others. Similarly, Kristen's service to the Targaryens is almost entirely unappreciated, but Alicent treats him with the respect that he desired and believed would come along with such a revered position like the King's Guard. Ironically, in the long run, it may have been better for both of them for their beliefs about the world that they live in to be destroyed, because a lot of the standards and ideals that they cleave to wind up hurting them and lead them to uphold a system that damages them and everyone else. But it's not very surprising that they cling to each other and the belief that if only the right person is in the right position, then the world might be as it should be. Because to accept the fact that you have been used and abused simply because someone more powerful than you wanted to do that is something that would be too difficult for most people to bear. So, when Allison and Kristen show up for each other and seemingly fulfill each other's dreams about the way things should be, it comes as no surprise that they unite so strongly. Because it means that everything they've worked for or suffered through can still have a purpose and greater meaning. They also allow each other to in some way fulfill the dreams that they had before those dreams were destroyed. And on a personal level, they are simply the only people in each other's worlds that really care about who they are as individuals and sees who they want to be and try to be rather than just seeing them as a cog in the Iron Thrones machine. 
Allison Hightower and Kristen Cole are undoubtedly flawed characters who, like every other character in the story, are not meant to be heroes. But the motivations behind their actions and their connection with each other are incredibly deep and nuanced. So to see them as nothing more than the enemies of the Blacks really misses what makes their characters so interesting and well-crafted. But what do you think? Are there hidden depths to Allison and Kristen's connection? Or is it really just about taking down Rhaenyra? Leave your comments and opinions below. And if you're interested in more content like this, like and subscribe.